Last couple of years, I've been collaborating with Dr. Lawless and Dr. Curran from Adolescent Medicine. They do the Roy G. Biv program at Children's Hospital. And we developed a workshop to help medical students better understand patients from the LGBTQ community. So we had a trial run, and it involved students getting a teaching session, and then they got to have patient actor encounters, and then they had a group discussion afterwards about their experience. And the really special thing about this workshop was not only were the students able to get practical skills, they were able to hear personal experiences from members of the community about their healthcare experience. Um, when I was a first year medical student, I got to see the uh, huge healthcare disparities that exist in Oklahoma um, in a different light. Um, as a med student is different than when you're a, you know, a regular uh, citizen here in, in Oklahoma. And getting to see how passionate students are about wanting to provide care and how uh, interested they were in wanting to participate in patient care, I felt that there was a gap that we could meet in the middle where the patients are able to get care as well as our students are able to provide care for those patients that need it. We asked for feedback and the feedback from students was overwhelmingly positive. In the pilot group they really wanted it to be part of the curriculum. Um, the students found it very challenging, but they also found it very helpful in understanding the experience of LGBTQ patients. There are two different, um, there are two different definitions that we can think of when it comes to underserved. One is the national definition, um, which they look at the number of uh, providers that are within an area and whether they're able to provide care. And the second is access to care and whether these patients are able to actually get to the doctor even if there is a physician there. So as an example, here in the Oklahoma City area, although we are in the middle of one of the biggest healthcare institutions in the nation, um, it, is, it is still challenging for some of the patients to get care. So we are still considered underserved here in the Oklahoma City region. Um, so with that, we are looking at individuals that are uninsured or underinsured. Um, we're looking at patients who um, are unable to get some of the care that they need within the hospital system because of any either financial or any other underlying reason. And why that's so significant is because when these patients don't get seen in a clinic, what ends up happening is they show up in the ER. And a problem that could have been avoided with a $10 pill now costs thousands of thousands of dollars. And not only that, the patient may be debilitated for the rest of their lives and unable to provide the, uh, the care that they want for their family um, or be able to live their lives to their fullest as they would have otherwise. So we want to provide that care early on, preventing those patients from ending up in the emergency room. Well, as a trans person myself, I know that seeking health care can be really scary. And when you seek health care, providers might not be educated. They might make hurtful comments, either intentionally or unintentionally. They might even refuse to provide care. And this really amplifies the health disparities that already exist. And it's a, I mean, it's a really painful reality, and we need to better educate our future healthcare providers. We really need to, what we need to do is earn back the trust of the communities that we've ignored for so long. And I think that this program and other programs like this are a first step to showing our values through action.